Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah, if you're new here, and we are doing a Talia Hibbert dedicated recommendations video. Where to start with Talia Hibbert. First, I'm going to give you a rundown as to what I think all of Talia Hibbert's books have in common, why I love her as an author, a little bit about her, and then I'm gonna get into her series and then her standalone romances. Talia Hibbert is a British, Black, primarily contemporary romance author, and you've probably heard of her. <laughs> if you clicked on this video, you probably know who she is. The reason I love Talia Hibbert and what I think all of her books have in common is the witty banter, the actual comedy elements of her stories, I think really shine. I think she's genuinely a funny writer. Not all romance authors can write wit and humor the way Talia Hibbert can, in my opinion. And she normally features a Black protagonist who is typically plus-sized. Many of her protagonists are plus-sized or curvy, and many of them have some kind of disability. So almost every single one of her books has some type of disability representation and or LGBTQIA plus representation. She has a book with a demisexual man protagonist, bisexual rep, all throughout her books, and a one complete gay romance as well. She has great tension between her characters and she writes some good smut. I think all of her scenes are a little bit different and unique from each other. I didn't find myself getting bored after reading through her entire backlist of the smut. I thought it was actually pretty unique to the characters in each book. So let's get into all of the books and why I love her so much and my final recommendation for where I think you should start with this author and dive into her backlist. We are going to start with her most famous work first because you've heard me talk about these books the brown sisters trilogy get a life chloe brown take a hint danny brown and act your age eve brown get a life chloe brown is about chloe who has fibromyalgia and after a near-death experience decides to create a bucket list for herself to get a life and start living life to the fullest and she employs the help of Redford Morgan, who is the property manager of her apartment complex to help her in this endeavor. This is sweet and lovely, funny and smutty, and this is the first time I read about a character who has my same disability, fibromyalgia. So this book truly means a lot to me, and this is my entry point into Talia Hibbert, and I absolutely adore this book. Danny Brown is about Danny, who is a PhD student slash pro adjunct professor who is trying to finish out her PhD in English literature. And Zafir is a security guard on campus and they have been friends for a long time and they decide to fake date uh, for reasons that will benefit both of them. This is a friends to lovers trope and it's, and Danny is a bisexual. Uh, witchy woman and I love them as well. This isn't my favorite of the trilogy, but I know that is an unpopular opinion. Most people I think on Goodreads find Danny the the best book in the trilogy. So my personal opinion, it's my least favorite, but I think this is still a solid installment. Actor Ave E. Brown is my favorite of the trilogy, despite my deep love for Chloe. I think Eve and her story and her relationship with Jacob in this book is the best executed, in my opinion. This is about Eve Brown, who is the youngest sibling in the Brown Sisters trilogy, and she needs to get her life together. She hasn't been able to hold down a steady job, and her parents decide to cut off her trust fund. So she runs away in a fit of pique and ends up at a small town Airbnb at a small town and she ends up applying to be the chef of the Airbnb uh, where Jacob is the owner. And he initially says, no, I don't wanna hire you, you're too flighty. And she accidentally hits him with her vehicle as she's trying to drive away. So she sticks around to help nurse Jacob back to health and help him run the Airbnb while he's nursing a broken arm. And I love the dynamic between these two. The autism representation I think is really well done. And I think Eve is one of the best 
fleshed out characters in my opinion. I find this one the funniest and the smuttiest in my opinion. You can see how much I've tabbed up these books. I truly think the Brown Sisters trilogy is some of her best work. I really really love this series and this book in particular by Talia Hibbert. Next we're getting into Talia Hibbert's Ravenswood series which is three novels and one novella in between books one and two and this is a small town contemporary romance series featuring black women obviously. The first book is A Girl Like Her. This is about Ruth who is a recluse, a town, the town pariah. No one really wants to associate with her and she just wants to sit in her apartment and read her comic books and write her online webtoon that she does. And Evan moves in next door and he is a blacksmith and the two of them start a friendship and an eventual romance. And I think this is such a good book. I gave this one four stars and I think this is a great introduction into this small town. You really get a sense for the town, whether it be for good or bad, since Ruth doesn't really get along with the people in the town, most people in the town. I will say the Ravenswood series maybe has a few more triggers in it uh, due to past relationship trauma, so I would be careful with this series in general, but I'd still say it's pretty low in terms of triggers, and I think this is a great installment. I really, really liked this one. I love it when the man of the the romance is obsessed with our lady and that's what all of the Ravenswood books have in common. It's uh, these kind of prickly ladies and the men who are obsessed with them. Then we have Damaged Goods which is the novella between books one and two. The main female protagonist in this one uh, was married to Ruth's ex and she also has a lot of trauma due to that particular person being abusive. And she is pregnant in this book and she wants to obviously run away and get away from this terrible marriage that she's in. So she flees to a small coastal town that she used to visit when she was a teenager and that's kind of her safe space. She thinks on that time very fondly in her life so that's where she flees to to get away from this marriage and she finds her summer fling that she had when she was a teenager and now he's all grown up as well. So that is Samir. He has been living there for a long time and he's never gotten over Laura. And so this is a second chance romance with a female lead who is pregnant. And I think this is one of the best done books with a pregnant protagonist. And I really love the pregnancy representation and all the discussions about that. Again, check the triggers for this one a little bit due to that abusive past relationship. Untouchable is the second full-length novel in this series and this is following Hannah and Nate. Hannah is a very prickly main character and is, is employed by Nate to be his nanny to his two kids. Nate is a widower and he is moving from a large town back in with his mom because she has cancer. So he needs help around the house and employs Hannah. This isn't my favorite. I don't particularly enjoy Hannah as a main character. However, I do think this explores the employer-employee dynamic in a really interesting and healthy way. So if, it, if that's a dynamic you're interested in, I think Talia Hibbert does a really great job exploring that through this relationship. So I do recommend it if you're interested in that, but it's just Hannah is not a main character for me. Then we have that Kind of Guy, which is the final book in the Ravenswood trilogy. It's about an older protagonist named Ray, and she is getting out of a very long marriage and moves to the small town to start her, her life over. Essentially, she is a fantasy author, and she strikes up a friendship with Zach, who is much younger than her. I think there's a 12 or 13 year age gap there. Ray is going to a fantasy convention essentially where her ex-husband is also going to be so she's very nervous about this and doesn't want to appear like she's still hung up on this man. He cheated on her and her ex-husband and his what new wife will be there. She kind of asks Zach to be her fake boyfriend at the event so she doesn't appear sad and lonely. And 
This is great. I really like this one because of the age gap element. She is much older than Zach. And I also like this one for the dem demisexual representation. Um, Zach is demi. And I think this is one of the best, I mean, this this is the only book I've personally read that has um, a demisexual main character that really talks about consent and what that means for this friendship and then this eventual relationship. I really liked how Talia Hibbert explored that in this one in particular. So Talia Hibbert has also written uh, a series previously that has now been kind of repackaged. Um, I think some of her earlier work she's actually unpublished because she's not proud of it or something. She she isn't, she's come so far in her writing she doesn't feel the same way about these older stories but I read the Just For Him series so that's what I'll be referring to them as. So I don't know if these books are still available but I do know that the third book in the series is. So I'm going to talk about them because that's what I was familiar with. The first book is Bad for the Boss and this is very intense employer-employee age gap romance and so if you're not into that I would steer clear completely of this book but I love this. I thought this was an extremely hot and also just the romance was surprisingly cute for how interesting and maybe like taboo the dynamic is you'd think it would just be like a scandalous time but it's actually very sweet and tender when it's all said and done there is a stalker plot line the main male love interest is not the stalker but it's a very intense stalker plot line so for this series in particular if you do choose to read it definitely definitely check triggers but I ate this up I loved this this is like a 4.5 this is one of my favorite Talia Hibbert books so I'll leave it at that the second book in the series is Undone by the ex-con and this is like a bad first impressions to friends to friends with benefits to lovers kind of situation Lizzie was a professional ballet dancer and she was recently diagnosed with diabetes and she was not managing her diabetes very well and basically quit being a, a dancer and now tutors a very wealthy family and they own a publishing company this family and the ex-con Isaac wrote a memoir from prison when he was in prison that is published by this publishing company. So that's how everything is connected. And essentially this is like a closed door romance where they, through a series of events, the characters are in the Swiss Alps together in a ski lodge, essentially, uh, where most of the plot of the romance takes place. And I really like this one. This is like a 3.5 out of 5 stars for me personally. I thought this wasn't exactly my favorite dynamic, but this is very smutty if you're into that. This has a pretty intense plot as well. There's like a, a blackmailing thing going on with Lizzie and she's kind of coercing <laughs> Isaac a little bit to get like information from him. So again, I would check triggers for this one, but I also really liked this one. The third book in the series is called Sweet on the Greek. However, she has, Tali Hibbert has repackaged this book as the fake boyfriend fiasco. So if you're looking for it on Goodreads um, or on Amazon or whatever your bookseller, it might be under the fake boyfriend fiasco. But I read it when it was still Sweet on the Greek. Sweet on the Greek is about Aria and Aria is a tattoo artist. She is best friends with Jennifer from the first book actually and um, at their wedding from the first book. They get married in Greece, Arya is attending the wedding, and she runs into Nick who is a f professional football, by football I mean for us Americans soccer, <laughs> a professional soccer player essentially and they kind of sparks fly and they end up through again a series of events. <laughs> Nick asks Arya to be his fake girlfriend for a while and so the two travel to I think they're in Spain on this like week-long getaway for Nick and his friends and he wants a fake girlfriend for that event and Aria agrees for the amount of money that Nick is paying her essentially and of course they start a little romance and I think this is one of the best books in the series I think for 
mass appeal. I think more people are going to like this one than my personal favorite, which is the first book in the series. But I think you know, if you like fake dating, if you like kind of, again, closed door, like they're kind of isolated in one location romance, I think this is an excellent choice as well. A standalone that is kind of a spin-off standalone to the Just For Him series is Work For It, again by Talia Hibbert. And this is Talia Hibbert's male male romance. And this is featuring Olu. Olu is the sibling of Lizzie from the second book. And he is often referenced and he actually shows up as a side character in all three books in the Just For Him series. But this is Olu's story and Olu is traumatized. Olu is a sad boy. He has a very, he's got PTSD. Let's be real. He's, he's going through it. He's having a rough time. And he decides to essentially like run away <laughs> from all of his problems. And he goes to this like farm in the in the UK to basically work there for the summer, like harvesting the crop, like volunteering to harvest the crop to kind of like clear his mind, get his priorities straight and like get away from his life for a little bit. And that's where he meets Griff. And Griff is this big softy who is he's one of the the leaders of the farm he's like the ranch hand kind of guy he manages a lot of the farm operations and he makes his own tinctures and he's just a really sweet guy and the two of them meet in a bar first and then you know that doesn't exactly go super great and then olu is shows up to the volunteer like harvest day and it's like what are you doing here <laughs> and Honestly, this might be my favorite. That might be controversial. This might be my favorite, Tali Hibbert. This is a five star for me. I think not only is this, this is just one of the most beautiful love stories I've ever read. When the two, when these two men hold hands for the first time, I burst into tears. This book made me cry three times when I first read it. And then every time since I've read it uh, also, tears because it's so sweet and comforting and loving and healing. Both of these men grow so much as individuals and as a couple that I just truly love them so, so, so deeply. <laughs> if, if I were to recommend one Talia Hibbert, if you just want to read one that's kind of a standalone on its own, you don't have to read anything else, I almost recommend Work For It before any other Tali Hibbert. That might be controversial to say, but I love this one. Read it! Another five-star Tali Hibbert is The Princess Trap. Look, <laughs> this is again probably unpopular. Um, I think this is one of her less popular ones, and I understand. This is about Cherry Dita, who works in HR, and she's fabulous. She's living her life. She works at a school and in comes Ruben and he is secretly a prince uh, at first. And he is like running an organization to help at-risk children. And so he's wondering if he can work with the school that Cherry works at for his program. And the two bump into each other and instant chemistry. They go on a lunch date immediately. They want to hook up that night right away. And the paparazzi catch up with Reuben and find them in a compromised situation, shall we say. And so they have to do essentially a, a engagement of convenience. Like they have to be in a relationship of convenience to kind of sell to the public that they're together so that these pictures don't get posted. And essentially Cherry's life would be ruined if that were to happen. So they are in an engagement of convenience. And I think this is the smuttiest. <laughs> it's a little bit of tiny, tiny little BDSM elements, like a dom sub type situation. Ruben is bisexual. And I will say there is a fairly intense plot line in here in terms of childhood abuse. Ruben was traumatized as a child and there are other children in this book that are abused and it is addressed. And it is like the main third act conflict is this abuse. So check triggers for this one in particular but this is again my top it's in my top three Talia Hibberts it goes back and forth between this one work for it and I think act your age 
like those three kind of shift around my top three but I love this one as you can see so these books aren't necessarily in a series but there are references to the princess trap in these next couple of books so next next we're going to talk about the roommate risk this is about jasmine and rahul and when they first meet in college they have a one night stand and jasmine then confronts rahul and says i don't sleep with my friends so you can either be my friend or you can be my lover but she doesn't like to cross those boundaries. And Rahul says, okay, I want to be your friend and we will never speak about this lovely time we had together ever again. And so the two become best friends and several years later, I think it's seven or eight years later, and Jazz gets, like something happens to her apartment and she's gonna, she needs a place to stay and she decides and Rahul offers to stay have her stay with him. And this is, so it's like a forced proximity and they were roommates type romance. And so if you like Friends to Lovers, this is Talia Hibbert's best Friends to Lovers. For me personally, I don't love that trope, which is probably why I didn't love this book. I still gave it like a three, 3.5 stars, but it's just not the trope for me. But this is, in my opinion, her best Friends to Lovers. And it just got a new cover. And look at how cute it is. This book is also called Bet On It. <laughs> so sometimes the audiobook says Bet On It. But again, a really solid installment. One of Jazz's friends is named Nina, and that's where Guarding Temptation comes in. This is a short, smutty uh, novella. And this is almost like a bodyguard romance, sort of, not really. Nina is getting threatened online, and so her best, her brother's best friend who is also her best friend james he's a mechanic he like goes kind of alpha male and wants to protect her and so she moves in with him temporarily to keep her safe from all of these online threats it's a brother's best friend forced proximity romance this is one of the best uh self pleasure scenes i've ever read good on tolly hibbert this was incredible for the smut and this is actually really cute. It's quick. They fall in love really quickly, but I think, again, if you like friends to lovers, this is going to be for you too. Holiday romance time. We have wrapped up in you, and this is a holiday snowed in together friends to lovers. Will and Abby, and they've been like childhood friends for like they were friends as children, and Will is now kind of a famous actor, and they've always kind of had feelings for each other but they never obviously acted on those feelings until they were snowed in together for the holiday season and this is again another friends to lovers in my opinion i don't think this one is done quite as well as the roommate risk but again if you're a friends to lovers fan you'll eat this up and this is very sweet in terms of the holiday good time cheersiness of it all if that makes sense another holiday Christmassy type romance is Mary Inkmas. <laughs> and this is about Cash and Bailey. And Cash is a tattoo artist, and Bailey eventually is hired at the tattoo studio to be like the front desk person and get her first tattoo from Cash. And this is, you know, holiday Eve. Cash invites Bailey to his family holiday events and stuff like that. And while I think this is steamy, <laughs> there are some scenes at the tattoo shop. And if you're into that, kudos. This one is probably the one of Tolly Hibbert's books that works for me the least in terms of the execution. The, the way that the third act conflict happens and is resolved is not my favorite. It has to do with Cash doesn't open up to Bailey and they have a fight. And it has to do with Cash's past and his trauma, and he doesn't reveal that. And basically his mom has to tell Bailey this is what happens to him. This is what happened to him. And then she runs after him to go fix it. And I don't like that. I don't like when a third party has to, like, reveals secrets about a main character to the love interest to solve the problem. That is just my personal preference. But if you're looking for a holiday steamy time, here it is. A Halloween holiday romance is Mating the Huntress. 
This is about Luke, who is a werewolf, and Chastity, who comes from a long line and a large family of werewolf hunters. And they are, of course, fated mates. They are fated to be together, and it's a silly, goofy time. <laughs> this is set around Halloween. She tries to kill him, and he thinks it's cute. So if you're into that, if you're into monster shifter, it's like a shifter romance more so than a monster romance, pick this up. This is a fun Halloween spooky time. Faded Mates, personally for me, is not my jam, but still, if anyone is going to make me enjoy Faded Mates shifter romance, it's going to be Tali Hebert. I still gave this three stars. I still kind of had a good time reading it. And then we have a surprise entry from Tali Hibbert, Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute, which is a young adult romance, which I don't, didn't, I've never enjoyed young adult romance, even when I was a teenager. And this was delightful and it is super cute. Like the cover and the vibes and the title really signify just how cute this is. This is about Bradley and Celine and S they used to be friends before the start of this book and they had a falling out and then they become friends again and then they become lovers. So this is a friends to enemies to friends to lovers young adult romance and this is so sweet and tender and Bradley as a as a character is one of my favorite Tolly Hibbert characters of all time. He has OCD and the way that he manages his OCD is really interesting and is explored really well. And Tali Hibbert has said that she wishes she could manage her OCD as well as Bradley does in this book. And this is a interesting in terms of the tropes because the two characters have to work together on essentially a scholarship project where it's like wilderness survival. And in terms of getting a scholarship to go to university essentially is the plot of this one. And I thought this was delightful. This was fun. This is charming. And I don't like young adult. And this is a four star read. I was blown away by the banter <laughs> and just like Talia Hibbert's style and her way of writing banter really fits teenagers. It just works perfectly. And I actually really, I highly recommend Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute. Wow, so those are all of the books that I have on my list that I have read by Tully Hibbert. So where to start? She's got standalones, she's got series, she's got interconnected things. And I will say this, if you read her books out of order or the series out of order, I don't think you're gonna miss anything in particular. I think even if you just decide to read Act Your Age, Eve Brown, that you, Obviously, the, the, her sisters are already coupled up, but I don't think you're going to miss anything drastic by reading her books out of order or onesie twosie here and there, if that makes sense. My favorites of Tali Hibbert's are Act Your Age, Eve Brown, Work For It, The Princess Trap, <laughs> and Bad For The Boss. <laughs> Personally, I really like those, but also uh, the fake boyfriend fiasco or sweet on the Greek. So those are like in my top five. I'm also a huge fan of Chloe. If you're suffering from chronic pain like I am, I related to Chloe on such a deep and personal level that I also really, really love her book, even though oh, as a book, it's not my favorite, but Chloe as a character and her struggles with her chronic illness is what really draws me in personally. So if I were to recommend a place to start, I would actually, I would, I would say honestly, start with the Brown Sisters trilogy and really any of those books in the trilogy. I think Eve Brown is the best, but if you just want a taste, I would try Chloe first, just so you can read them chronologically and you get a lot of her wit and humor that I think she does so well. It's a really good sample of her work. If you just want a standalone, I would try Work For It or The Princess Trap for me personally. But if you're a fan of Friends to Lovers, I would try The Roommate Risk first. She has a lot of Friends to Lovers 
romances and I think this is the best example of it but again it's it's more of a standalone so I think this is the best like executed friends to lovers loves my recommendations those are all of Talia Hibbert's books that I've read I'm so happy I was able to do this video finally I've been trying to get through Talia Hibbert's bath list for quite a while and I can't wait to see what she writes next Thank you all so much for watching. What is your favorite Tali Hibbert book? Or where are you going to start with Tali Hibbert? I would love to know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another video of mine very soon. Bye.